Hello, it is Monday and it is the 31st of January 2022 and I am continuing to read out of Lydia. Lydia is the continuation of a book I started writing in 2006 entitled Bliss After Life and I finished uh, writing that in 2017 and I have uploaded all the chapters which explains a lot of the background of the story. It continues uh, uh, with a book called Lydia, which uh, both of them have not been published. Uh, and uh, these are taking twists and turns, which I've really written in a stream of consciousness, really. Um, I finished last chapter. This story of Lydia is mainly about reincarnations, really. It's a family involvement with all people who knew Liz Bliss. Uh, chapter 51 I had finished, uh, that was uh, David and Susan, because they're all meeting at the refuge to watch together a movie called They Live. This was one of the points on the list. In fact, it was point 10, a Carpenter movie called They Live. I will write the list, Mio transmitted with, uh, through Melanie, in the descriptions on my bit shoot when I upload it. Anyhow, we're on chapter 52. Planning a viewing of They Live. Autumn was sure in the air. They had all been in touch the last few weeks to plan a viewing of the film Mio had asked them to watch together. They Live was apparently a classic, but none of them had heard of it. Through various call phone conversations, they had all agreed to meet at the refuge on Saturday the 6th of October. David had ordered the DVD and it looked like everyone could make it. He would drive with Silvana from Brighton at midday the coming weekend. Holly and Chris would bring Tony and Melanie from the south coast early on Saturday. Evelyn was going to try and come with Mark. Susan and David had been at the refuge all week because Lydia was teething and Faye was glad to have them around. David's daughter Maisie had been to visit at the beginning of the week and he was so glad to finally introduce her to Susan. She had come with Alexander, her new boyfriend and father-to-be. They had left Wednesday. Pete was busy at Evelyn's loft building and Anna had been much in the garden. The pumpkins were enormous and she intended to use them to make a soup for the new movie viewing. Tomorrow, Anna had been selecting two pumpkins to take and start the soup. They would all arrive tomorrow on Saturday and although Holly would bring a potato salad and Melanie had made a marble cake, she wanted to make sure the soup was ready and also prepared some dough for rolls. She was really looking forward to watching the movie with everyone. The list had been an, on everybody's mind, on and off. She was thinking back to her own demise over a year ago now. Had she been people trafficked? She felt so safe here, cleaning the dirt of the pumpkins. She had to carry them one after the other, as they had grown so big. Her and Pete had been watching Tolkien's Lord of the Rings. Pete had bought the box set, and they had finished the first set of DVDs. Many times they had looked at each other, bearing in mind item number nine, which was me or asking them to watch Tolkien's Lord of the Rings. Every item on the list had a reason, and so far it had confused her more. She had talked to Susan about it, and David suggested they watch the second DVD tonight. It was Friday and they could talk about it to the others tomorrow, before watching They Live. It feels like a mission, Anna was thinking to herself. She had started peeling the pumpkin and decided to put some music on. One thing at a time, she thought. With all the other items on that list, it seemed to her this was all each one of them could do. It was all sifting through their consciousness. She was glad Pete was so open. She herself had felt herself guided this last year. It all seemed so coincidental or synchronistic. Humming to herself, she stirred the soup and decided to get ready and comfy for bedtime watching. The soup simmering, she heard the front door. Pete came into the kitchen, sniffing the air. He took Anna in his arms. We got a lot done today. I'm starving. Are you cooking this for tonight? He kissed Anna and lifted the lid of the large pot. 
The soup is for tomorrow, but I have put the oven on and shall make us fish and chips. She had the fish and chips ready in the freezer. You go have a hot shower and put it all and I put it all in. I would love to eat and then watch another DVD. It's a task. She was laughing as she knew that Peter would love nothing better than food and a movie with her. Simple pleasures. Peter took a bottle of orange juice from the fridge and proceeded up the stairs to shower. He felt tired and hoped a shower and some food would revive him. He had read The Hobbit years ago, but wasn't sure if he ever watched any of The Lord of the Rings all the way through. He had seen one of them in the cinema, magical and long. He was glad to have another look at it in view of the other points on the list. How did this Middle Earth story of ancient times fit into the other things on the list? He had no idea what the other film Tomorrow They Live was about, but one of the builders had given him a synopsis today and he was now looking forward to see the whole movie. It seemed one of the fighting scenes was legendary. Chapter 52 Steve and Silvana Steve had finally met Silvana's daughter, Poppy. Her boyfriend had spent the last weekend with them. She and her boyfriend had spent the last weekend with them in Brighton, at Silvana's place. They had sat in the garden outside her studio and had made a fire in the Chimera. Steve had played his guitar and there was much catching up to do. Holly and his son Ben were of the same generation and there was much laughter about the copious impending babies. Poppy made it quite clear she was not ready for such a commitment and Silvana was quite glad because little Lydia had become one of Steve's priorities. He was talking to Ben several times a week. Her ex had never been so very interested in their daughter and Poppy thought that Steve was adorable. Silvana was happy. She had no idea how things would have developed if Poppy had not liked her new man. Steve thought she was lovely and they had all sung together in the studio late in the evening. Steve had decided to make samosas to take along to the movie showing. Silvana had read a synopsis of the film and couldn't wait for them all to watch it together. They would take Chap, her little dog, along again. It was a blessing that the refuge had such a lovely safe garden. She didn't really have any local friends who could look after Chap, but Poppy had promised a long weekend house-sitting in November because she and Steve were going to Egypt. Their, their first holiday together and she was glad and very grateful to Poppy. And a little time back home suited Poppy as well and it made everything so easy. Steve had already bought the tickets. She started packing her bag, the samosas were all ready and they had decided to start watching The Lord of the Rings, which Silvana had bought in a charity shop. She was setting the DVD player up and decided to read up about J.R.R. Tolkien's fantasy novel, which he had written between 1937 and 1949. She did not know that it was a follow-on from The Hobbit. That book she remembered reading on the tube in her early days in England when she was in her twenties. She had loved the elves whose chants warded off mysterious black riders. She had forgotten much, but watching it with Steve would be fun, a journey into Middle Earth. She had no idea how much they would manage to watch tonight, but she would take the DVDs to the refuge. It was a very long story, gruesome in parts, and she wondered what it had to do with all the other points on the list. The living was sure not easy in those days. She seemed a very, it seemed a very distant past earth and the battle between good and evil playing out with Frodo in the middle of it all. Chapter 53, Faye, Lydia and Ben. In the refuge, they had also sat down Friday night to watch the Lord of the Rings. Faye had only managed to stay awake for the first 10 minutes. She could never get the hang of the stories and with Lydia in her arm they had drifted off on the settee. Bennett also faded and then they left. David, Susan, Anna and Pete were going to watch the film and those two had gone to bed. Pete had constantly stopped the DVD because they tried to analyse the film while watching it and then the subject started to involve other points on the list. Pete had been talking about Tartaria as an architect, he was fascinated by the story of a lost history. 
David was equally enthralled with his, his story, as he called it, and the beginning and the middle and the end seemed lost somewhere. Pete ha had stopped the video game. Lord Sauron, who created the one ring that ruled all others. He doesn't look dissimilar to the good magician, does he? At least visually it seemed very obvious who are the good guys and who are the bad ones. Look at those ugly mugs. David pointed at the army of uglies, marching like a mindless herd. Yes, the, flight bet the fight between good and evil is still going on, you know. Anna had used some of the ready dough to make some rolls and had just come back into the room. Did you know that occult actually means hidden? Anna put the rolls and little plates on the table. Have you, ever, have you ever noticed how many occult symbols there are when you walk the streets of London? David and Pete had constantly been pointing at things on their summer walk through town. It was so funny, Tony could hardly ever keep up with us and told us he dreamt of gargoyles two night running afterwards. Pete took a roll and took the remote to, to watch, to switch the movie back on. I cannot wait to share the movie tomorrow with all of us here. We just have to agree to watch it in silence, otherwise we never get it done. I cannot imagine all of us will actually have time to watch all episodes of The Lord of the Ring, Rings, the, ta the Twin Towers and The Return of the King. It is truly a long story and we might finish it when we are all your age, Dave. Peter was laughing. Yes, and I will probably be the age Bliss was by the time I finish it, 95. I go with that. No hurry. Pete pressed the button. We watched one more, we watched one more hour and then turn in before we turn into couch potatoes. And yes, I have another beer. Anna was laughing as she had got up to bring the empty plates into the kitchen. I shall bring drinks. Go on, press Pete. It's almost 11 already. Chapter 53 The Movie Day October the 6th, we're in 2012 Chris and Holly had picked up their son Tony and Melanie and the conversation in the car had been non-stop. They had been touching on a few of the points of the list and Holly was explaining the healing power of certain frequencies like 528 hearts and 432 hearts. She had known about it through her music therapy training and had fallen si and all had fallen silent when she started explaining it. The car was purring along the A road and Holly was telling them that this knowledge of frequency had been misused to dumb down the masses and was actively used by the Nazi regime to create a feeling for the people. For instance, when they were waiting for the Führer to speak. How do you mean? Tony was riveted and Melanie knew what Holly was going to explain. Well, for instance, before a rally there would be a very low humming tone in the room, barely audible, but slightly uncomfortable, and just before the Führer entered they stopped the sound, which automatically gave a feeling of relief to the people in the room. This associated a good feeling with Hitler. She paused. Melanie thought, these mind games have been going on for so long. Holly continued, then they changed the tuning of A to 440 hearts instead of what is called a natural tuning of 432 hearts. How do you mean changed? Chris was lost. He loved music, but listened to a variety. Would he even know the difference? Well, they changed the written music and respective tuning everywhere to 440, which meant all other notes are tuned to that, ultimately a slight imperceptible discord. You mean like globally? Chris couldn't get his head around that. Well, yes, it seems like it. Of course, if musicians know about it like you do now, Tony, you can tune your instrument to the natural chords of A being 332. You know, when you tune up. Yes, Mum, I get you. I will talk about this with Ben and Steve later, because this is amazing. I never knew, although Obviously you do. I wonder if Silvana knows. She works with music, particularly rhythm though, I believe. Yes, I would be interested if she had heard it. With percussion instruments, the tuning is generally natural, like, say, a balafon out of wood. 
You know, we also say xylophone. Melanie saw a picture in the head of a group of elders playing around a fire, playing a very, playing very fast, and the drums were joining in the rhythm and all people were swaying together in tune. Yes, I know exactly what you mean, Holly. I have a picture in my head. She described the scene so well that everyone got it. That makes you wonder what else is going on that the general public has no idea about. Chris had been chewing over the questions that he had picked, but he had not got very far. It seemed to him the World Health Organization was what it said, looking after the health of the world, and the United Nations was equally concerned with this world, the United World. He did not say anything aloud. As he was driving, he had a good excuse just to listen, because somehow he knew his answer would be highly inadequate to everyone, and he preferred to hear what he could glean from others' findings. To find a track into these points, different to what he was obviously meant to think. He shook his head. Traffic was not too bad and they had made good progress. He was pondering on alien visitations and dreaded the answers that would no doubt come up. He was glad that all they had to do tonight was watch a film. What can be hard about that? And here we end this chapter. Uh, the next one uh, continues, Fifty Fifty Three, because we are on the day of the movie showing. Have a good Monday. Bye.